With me on the line today is Ricardo Lovi from Capital Network. Ricardo, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Andrew. Interim's out today from Evacta, Ricardo. Making good progress across the board here? Absolutely. So Avacta published their interim results to the uh, half year to the end of January 2018. And uh, for us, there are four key take-homes from their statement. So the, the, the first and probably the most important one is the faster than expected development of their second immune oncology program, so a LAG3 inhibitor that allows the company to evolve its lead program in, in a more ambitious LAG3 PDL1 by specific combination to enter the clinic in 2020. And secondly, they made good progress on the ongoing external collaborations in two key areas. So gene delivery with Moderna, Oncosec, and Fit Biotech, and about drug conjugates with Glythera. On the Aphimer reagents front, we expect further licensing deals to be announced in the coming months. And finally, uh, in our view, the recent uh, uh, weakness of the stock price largely uh, reflects uh, um, some uncertainty around the likely uh, capital, capital raise before year-end. We'll talk a bit more about that in a moment, Ricardo. First off, this PDL1 lag 3 combination. Tell me a bit more detail around this. Yes, the company announced that a second immune oncology program, so a lag 3 inhibitor, has progressed well, and this uh, allows a vector to leapfrog the planned first in men PDL1 monotherapy and instead to take a PDL1 lag 3 B specific into the clinic on a similar time scale, so uh, around 2020. What, what's really important is that we believe that the PDL1 and, and lag 3 combination has a much higher commercial appeal as only half a dozen companies are currently working on a similar program, and uh, Avacta could catch up with those very quickly. Well, back to what you were saying a moment ago, Ricardo, the balance sheet, uh, cash in the bank as of the end of January of uh, 8.3 million pounds. How far do you reckon that'll carry them? So, yes, the cash balance of about 8 million pounds, considering they have like an estimated cash burn rate of 8 to 10 million a year, that, that allows the company to, to, to be funded roughly until year end. So we expect them to raise capital in the coming quarters. And, uh, and the fresh money would cover uh, R&D and operating expenses, um, we, we, we hope at least, until the, the lead Aphimer immune oncology programs, programs complete the inhuman clinical studies, so around 2020-2021. And this would uh, uh, significantly increase their value as licensing out assets. Right, well, speaking of which, what's your, uh, what's your valuation here on Avacta? Uh, we look at Avacta, as uh, we discussed in the past, uh, using a sum of the part approach that considers separately the therapeutic programs and the reagents business. So essentially, we work out backwards what uh, uh, the implied equity value should be today, assuming that Athema products reach certain commercial levels and market shares 10 years from now. So uh, we make no significant changes to our previously published um, some of the part valuation uh, that, that yields an intrinsic equity value just short of 200 million pounds, that's significantly higher than current market capitalization that is about 25 million sterling. And this, uh, as we mentioned earlier, uh, is largely driven by uh, the speculation around the likely rights issue that is expected in the coming quarters. Full Ricardo's full report, click on the I on the top right-hand corner of your screen. Ricardo, thanks very much. Thank you, Andrew.